Somebody made some comments on my old popular clip that literally got me targeted the first time. <laughs> and I won. And then it caused this whole thing. What year did I post this? Let me see something. I believe it was 2016. Yeah. Wait. Oh, in 2017. Um, I thought I did this in 2016, but there was a lot of garbage going on in 2016 with some other rock stars. But even before that, there's some piles of shit out here. Some people that I supported. Oh, my God. Um, considering that this was one of my most controversial ones, which can you tell me why? <laughs> I don't know. And all the things I've ever done. And there's like barely even it's not even at 5K views yet. It's like literally at four something. And I have ones that are like 200 and I don't know. They're like way out there. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Because somehow all these men wanted coercion to be legal. Uh, it's rape. So, anyway. So, someone came here and he said that, wow, this aged very well. This dude belongs in jail. I'm not shocked at all. This is despicable stuff that I see from losers who define uh defend these guys oh yeah hey if you've been following me for a long time there's a lot of people that i used to defend that i used to actually spend a lot of money for but they're actually exactly like they're like twins they should go have sex with each other um yeah and <laughs> yeah it's kind of like oh i would be a hypocrite to be like oh this guy's totally fine but this guy's a pile of shit yeah at least somebody stopped doing what they were doing um, yes, they got away with it. They harmed a lot of, uh, women in the inside of the industry there, including in offices, um, a whole bunch of different things live on TV and government just sat back and was like, Hey, it's all good in the hood. Yeah. Okay. And then they said, look, these dudes leaving comments like, like that need help they are self-reporting what kind of loser type that uh they're rapists they're just out and proud rapists i mean the people that tick off you know these men you know mostly these gen x old men that are drunks um yeah they were totally promoting let's go rape some people men too <laughs> i was like oh i can't support that are you telling me i gave my money to this pile of shit oh is that why he was like trying to use women as some type of like blockage <laughs> like some blockage colon blockage um yeah it was really strange like this thing's going on in the background and then i started getting these calls and i'm like wow um i wonder who would have a problem with something that i was doing in the mid uh i don't know about 2011 <laughs> i was like in about 2011 and I was like, oh, yeah, I totally know. Um, but we cannot link certain things to people right now. Um, I had a person that I was eyeing. I called their neighbor. Um, we don't know that person. He would be a straight-up stalker. There was another incident, you guys, that did happen. And I forgot about it until last night. Oh, by the way, I found out my dad died. Okay, so anyways, anyways, as I'm going through this stuff last night, I was like, what the hell happened in 2011 and 10 and all that stuff? Because I was looking for a new place because I was mid dispute with this ridiculous drunk landlord that was losing his house and the feds had to, I don't know, the, the cops came in to take some people back to Oakland. It was like this weird thing. So I was like, I need to go look for a new place. So I put an ad out in Craigslist. I forgot I even did this because in relation to this other person. So I put an ad out in Craigslist. I was probably looking for a house to rent or an apartment to rent by myself. So one place contacted me for an apartment in Chinatown over there in that rampart section, I guess, somewhere over there. Holy crap. This is before I even knew about the rampart thing, though. Like, I didn't know the... I, I was a victim in all this stuff, but I didn't know that whole thing yet. Like, I don't know. There was something about it. And they go, come down to this building 
And I believe it was on Broadway or somewhere over there. It was somewhere nearby Chinatown because I drove down the street after I was waiting forever. And I was like, what's the area like? Because I was like, would I move here and everything? And there was all these like, you know, dragon things and everything. And that's, you know, kind of like my old work culture. And I was like, this is kind of cool area, you know. But the place where they sent me was scary as hell. It was like the building was in question if it was abandoned or if there was people actually living in it. And it was locked up and chained up. And there was nobody there. Like nobody walking on the streets. Nothing. You know, there's people driving by, but it was sort of quiet. So I don't know if it was a side street off that thing. I don't even remember. I have the visual of like what the building itself looked like. And right next door, there was a little tiny corner store where like maybe one person would go into it every hour or something. It was like that. And so I parked right there by the corner store. And then I walked over to the apartment building and it had maybe like, I don't know, four or six units. It's hard to say. It's like one of those ones where you walk up the stairs and it has one main door and then you go in it and then there would be like maybe two units on the bottom or four on the bottom and maybe two or four on the top, something like that. I didn't go inside, so I don't even know. And then it had a parking structure in the back, but the gate was closed. But when I looked back there, I didn't see any cars back there, but... I saw some window where it looked like maybe someone lives there. It could be literally one person living there or they could be illegally living there. I have no idea. And I was looking at the mailbox thing trying to see does mail come there or is it like what is going on here? So the guy's like, yeah, come and meet me there at like, I don't know, say two o'clock, right? So I drive all the way from uh, Van Nuys because I lived in Van Nuys at the time, I believe. Yeah. So I drove down to this apartment unit and I got out of my car. I brought some food with me. I don't know. It was just kind of weird. So I waited. Nobody was there yet. And I was like, okay, how long should I wait? And I waited, waited, waited. 30 minutes goes by. I call the guy. He doesn't answer. And it was so creepy. It was like a deserted town or something. It felt like that because there was nobody there. And I'm like, is anybody ever going to come out of this building? Or is any person going to walk by where I can ask anything? You know, does anybody live there? I mean, I guess I could have went to the corner store and asked, does people actually live there? Which I didn't even think of doing. But I was trying to visually see this. So I was like, I don't know. I can't tell. And then I started getting this like uneasy feeling like I'm being watched. Because the guy's not answering the phone. He's not even there. And it's all quiet. And I'm standing out there and I go, I hope to God I'm not going to get mugged or shot. It feels like a setup. Now it feels like a setup. So I'm like waiting. So I waited an hour, you guys, because I drove so far and wasted gas. And I waited an hour and I kept calling, calling, calling. Do you won't answer the phone. So then I get home. I call again. All of a sudden he answers. And he's like, oh, you know, come back, come back. And I'm like, I just went there. So I guess we rescheduled. I'm assuming on another day. I don't think I went back that same night. Anyway, so he tells me drive back. I believe on the next day or something like that and come there at this time. So I called before I even went, I believe. And then, so then I went again, all of a sudden, nobody. I'm like, this is freaking me the hell out. Like who would do it? It doesn't make sense because I was even thinking like this. I was like, could it be a scammer from out of the country trying to get your money? But he didn't ask for money. And how would he know that I got there? And then when I leave, knows when I get home and answers the phone. So the same thing happened. So I went out to this building. Nobody. And I waited, waited. It was so freaky. It was more freaky this time because I'm like, okay, he just told me to come again. No one's out here. And I feel like I'm being watched. Something weird and it could be from the guy in the building itself and he doesn't want to answer the thing and he's a pervert like nobody even knows okay 
So I'm like, oh no, ma'am. Or it's because somebody's trying to get me to leave and someone's breaking in my home back home. I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. And yeah, the cops already came and took those people away. So I don't even know. So I come back home, call him again. All of a sudden he answers when I get home. Didn't answer when I was out there, but answered when I got home. And he's like, oh, no, come again. We reschedule. We come this time. He didn't make any excuse as to why he wasn't there. And it's just like, what? And I was like, nah, I don't know what's going on here. Like, it's not a thing where they're trying to get money from me. No one mugged me there. You know, like sometimes there's that thing where they have you meet somewhere off a of Craigslist and totally jack you. And I was like, I don't know. He didn't ask for money. He didn't do that. But he's having me come there, wait, watching, and then waits to answer the phone when I get home. So they know when I'm leaving. Because they're not answering when I'm there. So how does he know I'm there when I'm calling to begin with, right? So I was like, oh, that thing is like, I don't know. It was creepy as hell. So I brushed it aside, right? I just forgot about it. And up until last night, I go, oh, my God, that's right. This real freaky ass thing happened right here. So um, I don't recall talking to any other guy. I, um, I sometimes get these weird... Uh, responses like it'll be a guy from santa monica and he'll email me and go i have a bedroom for rent in santa monica do you want to rent it and it's like a total predator and so then um i would have said no anyway because i didn't want a roommate so um yeah if there's anything like that it would have just been that and or if i did see an ad and i thought well maybe i should call it just to check it out that could have happened um, but I don't recall that and nor could I see myself wanting to mostly after this situation I was like most of the time I want to live by myself anyway So why would I look for the roommate thing? I had too many bad experiences with that where I was like, oh, no, we're going back to staying by myself, you know, and so um, Right after I okay, so I find this apartment right the one I end up suing well, I find this apartment, right? So they were on Craigslist or something. They said they had a single for this and that. And I go, oh, really? I doubt I can get it, but I'm going to go try. It was kind of like this. And I went down there and then they're like, sure. And I'm like, oh, cool. Now I'm done. So I get my, you know, my apartment. And then um, I started uh watching some bullshit online and i know that that pissed people off okay this i do know and i equated for some reason mentally i was thinking oh there's just all these people mad you know i just it's so stupid if i even laid this out it is so dumb and i don't like any person in this story anyway but it was just at this moment there was a whole thing going on and while i was watching them <laughs> i was like while i was watching them and going, you know what? This is actually good. Yeah, it was kind of weird. I get this text. And they're like, I want to talk to the cool girl. And I go, who the fuck is this? And I hate text. At that time, it charged me. I don't text nobody at that time. Okay, so no guy's going to be going on like that with me anyway. So I was like trying to run my brain over this. I was like, who has my number that would like try to F with me like that? And then they're going to be like, oh, it's me or something. Right. And I'm like, I don't recognize this number and nor would anybody talk to me that way. It's so strange. And they didn't say my name either. So that was another thing. And and then you have to say the right name. You have to know the right name. Ah, I was like, you have to know the right name because I know who to, you know, weed out. So I was like, um let me check this number online so i checked the number online and online it was related to a guy named frank selling a truck i could swear it was a red truck but i don't know i was selling a truck and i was looking at it i was like do i know a frank no i don't know a frank maybe frank is this guy that at one of these uh get togethers i was just like trying to think of all these stupid things that we've done in the past where we were up you know gatherings and stuff with people co-workers and everybody else so i'm like did i give somebody my number i may have and then i forgot you know i was like going on like that 
And then I was like, either that or these people are trolling the hell on me because they're mad. <laughs> yes, dude. So, like, I tell the guy, I go, I'm a guy. I said, I'm a guy because I don't know who that is. I go, I'm a guy. And they didn't even care. Like, they ignored it and then said, um, I want to talk to the cool girl. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. And totally ignored that I said that I was a dude. And I said, you got the wrong number. That's it. Like, you don't know me and you don't know who's answering back to this guy. It could be my boyfriend, right? It could be anybody. And this dude's going on and I'm like, I have no idea who that is. And then he kept going on. Like, there was like a couple texts and then into like later that evening or something weird. So I just brushed it off that it was somebody trolling me, some bullshit, some bullshit. Uh, I wasn't thinking, oh, stalker. I don't know. It was a weird thing. And I saved the message and I go, you know what? For me to check into this, I'm going to wait. I always wait like a million years when they least expect it. Okay. Least expect it. Because if I called right then, then they could say all kinds of things and they know who's calling. So I was like, I'm going to put it away. So like I forgot about it. I actually I put it away and I forgot about it. And then all of a sudden in 2016, some other person's being a pile of shit still and being a Anthony Kiedis, basically. Um, no, there was like actually a lot of stuff going on in 2016. And I was like talking about the Golden State Killer because I was talking to FBI and I actually had just called for the LAP, LASD, right? And I found out that information. It was crazy. And I was trying to get information, you know, on the childhood portion of the story. And I go, holy shit, that's actually the dude, you know? And so then I went through the story and I go, God, you know, that dude did really like Thursdays. I was like making this comment about Thursdays. It was the craziest thing because I noticed I go, oh, Thursdays wasn't really his favorite day. I wonder if he had a job on Thursday. You know, I was just thinking of all these like little details, you know, of his actions. And, um, I was trying to go through our family thing and everything else on it. And all of a sudden, oh, I can't skip this part. So, so then because I talked to FBI and gave him that information about the phone calls in 85, 86, whenever it was right. And I was like, you know what? I actually got a weird text in 2011 and I didn't think twice of it. I go, I don't know who Frank is. And so then I pull it up, right? So then I relook online to see who that is. And I go, now's a perfect time because it's like five, six years later, right? This dude ain't going to know nothing, you know? And I'm going to call from a different phone, different county, different everything. They're not going to know who's calling. They're just not. Nobody would unless you're a hardcore stalker on one single person. Okay. And even then. So I was looking and I saw the owner of the phone and I go, Oh no, I don't know who that name is. It's some Asian guy. I don't know who that is. That's not even, I don't even recognize that through the human trafficking ring. Okay. So I was looking at, it, I go, I don't know. I don't know anybody in Santa Monica. I didn't know it was from Santa Monica, but I was like, I don't know anybody in Santa Monica. And I thought, oh, you know what that is right there? It probably is the new owner to the phone. And they probably didn't have it prior to when they made these calls. Because it's been so many years now, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to call that person and find out when they got their phone. Like I was thinking of it this way, right? I, there was a little folly in that thought right there, but... I just thought like, well, they could tell me when they got the phone and if they got any call. Now, if they, if it was a new phone with them, they could tell me if they got any calls for somebody else. Right. Cause my phone did that too. Like every time you get the new number from the new thing, um, if they could help me in any which way with that. So, um, so what I did was I called the number, the guy answers and I go, Hey, um, how long have you had this phone? They, I literally just asked like that. I, and he's like, I said, did you have it in 2011? And he said, yeah. And I go, I, it took me off guard. Cause I was like, oh, now I'm actually talking to the owner of the phone who texted me. And so then 
I go, yeah, you know what? You texted me. And he's like, oh, I got, and he answered like this, like right away. He's like, oh, I got your number off of Craigslist. And I'm like, no, if my number is on Craigslist, I would have gotten a tank of calls of people trying to hit on me and doing all kinds of things. No, but I didn't realize I go, oh, I did a, a rental thing. That was later, right? So I was like, but I don't know if this is the, I don't know if this is all together though, because the guy said that, but his name is not Frank. Asked him on the text, I believe, is your name Frank? And he said, yeah, or something weird. And the car that was put for sale was under a name Frank. So that's not him crank calling me. That's somebody actually putting something for sale in the public. So if you're selling a car, I would think that you'd want your name to match on the car that you're selling. But that's not the name of the owner of the phone. So I was like, that doesn't come together right. However, the dude could have been stalking me through Craigslist by using the rental ads. But it still didn't answer this. And how the hell would he know that unless he was still stalking me at the time when I called him? This is a strange thing. So then it got confusing. And I wish I didn't make that call. Because then the following day... I get these creepy ass voicemails on my other phone, on my other phone number, not on the Riverside one, on my actual phone. And I'm like, yeah, and then he says, I won't be telling the truth. Now, could you relate those things together? Yes. Could it be that person? Uh, possibly, but who the hell is that person? It's like a serial killer. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. So then I wasn't sure because guess what day that was? That was my dad's birthday. On my dad's birthday on a Thursday. And I go, oh my God, this is so confusing because we could sit there and try to pin that guy to do that. But it may just be coincidence that I had just called on that thing. And then they called that other number. But I didn't say who I was. Never, not once. So he remembers from 2011 in 2016 that he texted me that one day. Out of the blue, just absolutely. I'm the only person he ever texted. That's crazy. So that's why I'm like, who is this person? So just to get more information on that guy, I called his neighbor because I went to look. I go, who lives by this person? We need to know who the hell this piece of shit is right here. So I didn't want to go to FBI right away and go, I don't know if this is the East Area Rapist or I don't know who this is. It's creepy as hell. I don't know who these people are. Regardless of who it is, it is a perpetrator. Regardless of who it is, it is a perpetrator. It is a stalker trying to terrorize me. And I'm like, okay, so let me call the neighbor. So I call the neighbor. The neighbor was really nice. They were really nice. They were like, Oh, yeah, um, the dad there is schizophrenic, and those guys, they're really weird. They're really weird. That's what she said. Something about some mental health things and all that. And I go, okay, that's already scary enough, okay? So we know somebody's off kilter. So I was like, okay. Um, but it didn't answer who Frank was, and unless this person has multiple personality disorder, and he's using... It could be a number of things because they could have other people in that household and they're using that number and there's another guy in the mix named Frank. I don't know. That's the thing. So I only got that much information. So I got enough information to give it to law enforcement to have them look at it because they're going to ask me. They, they want me to do the work all the time anyway. So I didn't want to take it to FBI yet until they ruled him out because if it wasn't him then, you know, you see what I'm saying? So when I went to Riverside, uh, well, what happened was I actually called Santa Monica. So I called the Santa Monica Police Department and I said, yeah, uh, there apparently I got some guy that was texting me here from years back. And then I all of a sudden got this voicemail. We need to check the voicemail thing. And the guy actually lives in Santa Monica. And they go, okay, that's great. We'd like to help you. But first, what we want you to do is go to the local police where you're at, which doesn't make any sense because this is a phone thing and the phone calls were actually done when I lived in North Hollywood. So, I mean, if you're talking about the actual place where I was at when it happened, North Hollywood. 
Um, but then I was temporarily in Riverside. So they wanted me to go to the Riverside PD. Well, Riverside PD blocked me from reporting it. Because here's what she said. This was the... I, I Now, I've said this to you guys before, but you may have missed it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it makes my brain hurt. I called and I go, okay, I have these audios and I'm trying to figure out how to bring them down to the station because I don't have a burner, you know, and anything. It was on a, it was on my AT&T voice message and then I put it onto my computer. So now I just have a digital thing and AT&T erases voicemail after 15 days. So I was like, okay, so I got to hear, how do I bring it in? That's how, what I asked, right? And she's like, for what? What would? Why would you bother with? I don't know. She's being stupid. So, I go because I just had to deal with the 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 East Area Rapist. Oh, the Night Stalker. So he was originally called the Night Stalker. So the Night Stalker has two two different Night Stalkers in the state of California, and the one was that Richard Ramirez, that you know that fool. So people confuse those two a lot, which I did too when I was younger. Um. And she goes, that guy is already arrested. And in fact, I think he's dead. So um, what? I go, no, uh, this is a different guy and he's not arrested yet. And he, he most likely is not dead yet. We didn't, nobody knew that he was still alive. I believed he was alive for a number of reasons. But um, she tried to tell me he was dead and he was arrested, which made no freaking sense. And then when I told her the story, I go, yeah, I had given the thing to FBI. Now I got these voicemails and I want to uh, ace out this other guy that's stalking me. And then she's like, um, you know what? If that happened to me, I would just ignore it. So I'm just going to ignore it. And maybe how do you know that he didn't find you the way that you found him? And I'm like, what? She tried to victim blame me for a guy stalking me in Riverside. So she's misconduct queen, the phone lady at the police department in Riverside County, y'all. So because she did that, I just went straight to FBI and I go, yeah, this audio, I don't know who it's from, but regardless if it is a serial killer or regardless if it is this guy, it's a crime. And the guy is stalking me. Like that's the whole point of it. It's like, hello, you morons. But the damn Riverside PD is just, that woman is like, I just let people rape me, you know. Yeah, this. Fucked up that shit right there. Santa Monica police was all ready for it, but they need them to go take that thing to them. And I had no way to give it to them. So I didn't even get to go into the Riverside PD to give them the audio. So I call FBI and they're like, oh, um, if we want to come and get that, can we do that? And I go, sure anytime and then so i put it up online i'm assuming that they just took it from online and then they may have um i don't know what they did um they could have they could run the i don't know i don't know what the problem is with the number the number was a, a blocked thing but when i called at and t because i did some further research on it at and t said that they may have used a burner phone so I was like, okay, well, that's making this thing weird. Um, so yeah, when I heard the voice again the other last night, I was like, you know what? I was like, who does that sound like? I don't know. It's not good. I was like, um, it could be anyone. It just could be anyone. And I don't want to uh, pigeonhole it into, oh, it's that guy. Because it could just be very coincidental that it just so happened the next day. But it was on my dad's birthday. But the person that's stalking me uh, could be watching my videos here. And they're listening to me talking about the Golden State Killer. They're listening to me talk about my dad's birthday. They're listening to me talking about certain things. And I they may be using that to, you know, be a terrorist. Yeah. And it could be any male up in here. And that other guy may be mistaken and he was using Craigslist and calling some other girls and it could be a whole different thing. And it just so happened because I put an ad out to go look for a rental. But then it's making me question the story of having me meet at an apartment in Chinatown because that was the main creepy ass thing in the story. 
And I believe I also had just got done talking to an agent uh, for human trafficking on a girl. And I'm like, could, uh, government could do a lot of stupid ass shit. I don't know if that person is government. Like when I was looking at it, I was like, it almost seems like if they asked me for money, it would almost seem like it was an out of the country scam to try to get money from me. But that wasn't even present in the story. And then somehow they know when I'm there and they know when I leave. And why would you do that? But what is the purpose of that? So the other purpose of that could be somebody went into my home while I was gone. Uh, that's been a common thing of bullshit LAPD out here. Uh-huh. They could have broke the laws and went into my home. They could have went into my home and bugged it for all I know. Yes. And that's why it's like, uh, that is in question um yeah so that was what happened there was no i don't recall talking to a dude in santa monica but i do recall ads from santa monica and they were perverts so what's the other thing um oh so i witnessed lapd covering up for a pill doctor Okay, so this actually just happened uh, not too long ago. And I'm like, LAPD is like fake presenting in the media. And I go, no, they got caught uh, helping out a pill doctor. I go, that's exactly what happened. And they were admitting to breaking the laws and that they would break the laws. And I go, who are you breaking the laws for? Oh, a pill doctor. Yeah, somebody that got in trouble. Uh, I would say, I don't know to what extent they got in trouble. Uh, they got, they got, is it the DEA? They had, um, no, I don't know. They had big government. I'm like, I call them always big government. My big government, the ones that come in over everybody to go bust, you know, all the drug addicts, you know, the drug rings. Okay. Yeah. So they slammed down on this doctor, I guess a while back. Back in, uh, actually, when I started talking about these doctors, I guess in the 2008 portion, somewhere around over there. And then they, I think you're always under the radar when they do that. And I was not aware of any of this. So there was a whole different thing here. And then they were all criminal. And I caught them all on videotape. And I go, oh, wow, media, do you want to see this? I was like, media, do you want to see this? It's the craziest shit I've ever witnessed and i was like no way they got me involved in this and i go you know what it's the best backfire on la county because they threw me in a situation i didn't want to be in against my will and then forced me here to stay and then all of a sudden they're all being criminals here like everybody the county's being a criminal lapd's being a criminal everybody i mean everybody and the nobody knows the laws and i'm like this is like actually extraordinarily serious like to the point of people are going to go to prison type of kind of shit and i'm like uh yeah then they try to be like uh look away and play blind i'm like yeah that's not me sorry uh do i get a kickback for that no uh so um yeah it turned into this thing so then i called down to the stage uh to the investigators the detective and so i call him 1997 because that's the year he was hired and I go, oh, shit, no, 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 no. You do not want this, okay? I am going to stress this. If you see officers working from 1997 and prior, um, beware. Uh, that made sense. Like, I was like, oh, he breaks the law and he's actually part of the investigator. So he's not going to bust himself. Ah, ah, I, was like, I go, it's not perfect. That's how you do it. You become a criminal, break the laws, and then become part of the uh, internal affairs. That's awesome. And that's how organized crime happens. So, yeah, he admitted that he would have done the same conduct. I'm like, okay, Mr. 1997, do you know who you did that conduct for? A pill doctor. A pill fucking doctor. And you're out here pretending and fake crusading for Matthew Perry. And this is just recent. This is just a couple months ago. And I'm sitting here trying to get answers from LAPD from their conduct here. 
And you know what? LAPD was so freaked out, they wouldn't even talk to me. I go, you know why? LAPD will get freaked out with me around when they're breaking the laws. And then they will make me homeless. And I was like, that's exactly what happens because they're criminals. But in this case, I kind of want to make clear in this case here that it seemed to appear that uh, when I was asking the victims in it, uh, that two of the... Okay, so they're actually his patients, by the way. They're his patients. Do you guys know of any doctors that abuse their patients like this and throw them into a house and then lie to LAPD to get them thrown out and say that they just broke in? Have you heard of anything like that? I've gone after so many doctors, but that one, that one, that one, um, it's a little new. Um, no, that's major, major abuse of their practice. Like, I cannot even start, I can't begin with that. And I was thinking, oh yeah, the medical board will literally flip the fuck out on this one. Oh no, it's all good for them. So I was like, okay, well, if we're going to be doing conduct like this and LAPD helping them break the laws... And you're going to come out here and ball face lie to the public and do this weird focus. This is what they did. So they tried to get your focus away from L.A. County and the government promoting this conduct with doctors that you need to pay attention to the fact that ketamine is a bad thing. It's like, no, actually, there's so many bad drugs out here. It has to do with you not taking down the bad perpetrator doctors that would do that. First of all, if someone's calling me a moron, uh, that's a big flag that that doctor's a pile of shit and you need to get rid of them. Honest to God, it's like I'm not going to be treated like that from any pile of shit. But I have actually reported that. And that's why I was reading that line and I was like, nah. I already know what the response is because I've already, I've already reported all the things that they're listing, okay? uh cash money through xyz oh i've already reported that type of conduct Go government says this uh we do not deal with cash uh because it's too hard to follow ha 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 yeah so basically that so basically they say they ignore cash conduct so i'm like uh yeah about 99 percent of the crimes are done through cash i mean what the fuck government yeah so i've already hit up government in every different area on all these different things you guys have no idea for decades we've been going through this so i was like yep uh-huh there it is oh gee i can't figure out why we have a bunch of drug doctor i can't figure it out you know what i mean uh th they're like we don't care about their conduct outside work we don't care that you know they're raping patients in you know the room and we don't care they're videotaping you in a gyno office we don't care that they're sitting there trying to get you to do STDs tests every month. And we don't care uh, that they did unnecessary procedures or effed up and botched up a procedure. We don't care. We are safe and we will protect this house no matter what. If they murdered somebody, we actually really don't care. It was an accident. He's doing his job. Yeah, I mean, honest to God, they're legal. Is like... I, I don't even know what attorney deals with this because... I haven't had an attorney go after the medical board yet, which I, I, I may, I may have to do that because I need to see like how they fight these people because LAPD is a different story. LAPD will play this game like we're good people, we're saints, and we would never stand for this type of conduct. Again, the medical board stands like this. We don't care. They can be shitty people, but we're not going to do nothing about it. And I'm just like, how do you argue with that? They're basically saying we could be criminals and F you. That's it. Like, literally, that's their argument. And I'm like, well, I don't know how you're supposed to ever go at them. Why, why do you have this thing going on? Oh, and the story on the Utah thing, I had done a read through, but I'm just like, ah, oh, my brain. Um, it had to do with them saying that sexual assault was actually part of the health care. And they were actually now defining it saying it's not part of health care. Sexual assault is not part of health care. And I'm like, Bravo, Utah. Bravo, Utah was trying to argue it's all sexual assault is part of health care. You're supposed to expect it, ladies. And then I guess they went through the court system to then get it to where it says it's not part of health care. It's weird. They're like, this is like having a doctor steal a wallet during procedure. I'm like, no, actually, I wouldn't use that 
as an example. Okay, yeah. So, anyways, their legal on stuff is asinine. Like, it's uh, quite... You have to really go to school for that thing because it's uh, a... <laughs> yeah. That thing, I, I cannot win them. Like, I'm sitting there trying to figure out, like, well, how are you supposed to go at it then? Because basically they're saying, even if a doctor rapes you, we're going to end up in court and then you need an attorney and we won't do shit. I mean, it's like, what the hell is that? Then why have a reporting system? It doesn't make sense, right? So, yeah, no, their legal arguments are something else, dude. They sent me like, four brackets of fucking um this is i don't even know where that paper is i would read it to you guys if i knew where it was right now it's in a stack with other government garbage um something like you know uh something out of the workplace something 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 i don't even know literally it was like four paragraphs of like legal jargon of how uh it doesn't uh, relate to them to do shit to care and um too bad yeah i was like what the hell is that it's like oh the guy's like raping all the children outside the doctor practice and they're just like we don't care dude so go away uh they're smuggling children into a building we don't care dude so go away what else can I say to you guys today? The dad thing is insane. My cousin, my long lost cousin, that's related to the grandfather that we never knew who's a total child rapist, was like wishing me a happy birthday. And yeah, I have all this family in Michigan and shit, I guess, <laughs> which I didn't even know. Um, yeah, and... I guess apparently through some other family members. Yeah, he passed away in February, which is kind of interesting because I was just going through... Uh, what happened in February? There was some stuff in February. Um, but, uh, yeah, but the crazy thing is, is that one day I was outside during COVID and I could swear I see my dad in the passenger seat of a freaking car with some lady driving him. And I've questioned this. And it's so like my dad to do some stalking bullshit like that. But I was thinking, like, were they trying to serve me papers? Were they trying to do... I don't know, but they didn't. They reversed the car, went by me, and then drove off. And so I don't know if that's a thing where they're just like, I just want to see... Her. I mean, that's just creepy. Like, I don't know what the hell's with that, you guys. They could have came out here to take a trip to San Diego, because that's some place that he would probably go. And then stalked me down, found me, and then just let it be. I did not get served uh, any papers from uh, an attorney uh, for the will. So um, I don't know if they did a different thing on the will. If he had, I'm pretty sure he had one because my dad has a lot of crap. That they did something to where they won't even have me get the copy to say I get nothing. Unlike his evil mother who did that crap. And that's how I knew she died, because they hunted me down, served me the paper. So I was like, well, I didn't even get a notice here that that even happened. And I find that to be oddball. And my dad needed to be investigated in this story and question. And so now he's dead. So now I have to, uh, you know, still go around and do all this work. So um, to figure out what he did. And, um, yeah, if I go out anybody, it'll be the other family members, whoever's alive, you know, it's just going to be that type of thing. But apparently my extended family said that their family did the same thing where they lied and said they're emancipated. And I go, what bullshit is this? This is illegal. I haven't heard of any parent doing that and lying about it. What I've heard has been where they actually legitimately went through a courthouse and a court did that. And I don't agree with that conduct right there unless they have some type of a parental other, some other thing to that. Um, but in this case here, no one actually did that. And if they did that, we need to find out how they manipulated paperwork. Because I never went into a court and I was not able to um, take care of myself and I wasn't taking care of myself. 
and they were um, controlling everything up until my mid 20s, actually. Uh, all my legal paperwork and, you know, a lot of other stuff. So I was like, yeah, I don't even know. Like, I don't know the answers to a lot of things because he would actually write them out or tell me to write down something, you know, in, you know, response to something. And I don't even know why. Um, I just trusted him because he was, you know, the legal guy. So I was like, well, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's any problem with them finding me because I've been in the same place for six years. So it's not like somebody can't find me. I mean, we have stalkers out here that are finding me e easily. So I'm just like, well, I don't know what they did. I don't know what they did in the paperwork. They may have just... Uh, cause I would have originally been in the will and then they probably removed me just like his evil grandmother, my evil grandma did, but I still got a copy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it was different in that case. Um, or if it's just, uh, some other bullshits going on right now. Um, I have stuff that they had of mine and I would like to know where it is. I mean, they have personal property of mine. They actually have personal property of mine. They have photos. They have, I have awards that they have, like trophies. Uh, I mean, I can go on a long list. It's like a lot of my private stuff. And it's like, where is it? I would like to get that back. I mean, my awards and shit. Like, I have a whole list of shit. And my dad always had it, like, in his garage. And then... When this all happened, they, I don't know. They, I don't know what they did with all my stuff and they never gave it back to me. Like I have stuff of value and then, and then the things of importance, right? My achievements, my achievements are very important to me. For men, their achievements, we're supposed to bow down to their stupid, you know what, over their goddamn achievements. So yes, those things are my achievements. And I'm like, well, where is this stuff? They never made any attempt to give me that stuff back. We already had most of my stuff stolen from the apartment thing, that scam right there that government wanted to partake in um, illegally. And I'm like, I already lost all that. But this is like other personal items. It's like photos, childhood thing, but, you know, just, just things. Okay. So I was like, I don't know where that's at. Even Steven, if you got me raped, my dad didn't get raped. Okay. So my dad didn't get harmed and his life wasn't destroyed for 30 some odd years. I feel that they are financially responsible for that. So I was trying to figure out who the custody was under and the county wants to cover that up and try to say that they never got a divorce and there's no paperwork. That's bullshit. And so I go, no, nope, that's somewhere. And also I found out that I was born at Kaiser and Kaiser cut me on my forehead as a baby, <laughs> like as a baby, they were horrible. And I didn't even realize how close that stuff was in vicinity to the Golden State Killer. I was looking at um, our living situation in that 78 portion. I swear to God, I don't even remember this house, but we used to live on a street called like Arnold or something. And this house is like total retro. It still is retro. It's pretty crazy. I was like, I don't remember that house at all. I mean, the design today, like if you're into that, I don't know what it would be considered tra uh, traditional modern. I don't know. It has like very sharp V lines and slanted windows it's like all triangular i was like we actually lived in that thing i don't remember i remember that the street name but i don't visually remember being inside that house i was like that's a cool house but i don't remember living in there and um that house along with our dad's old friend's house used to be like right off the freeway coming in i guess from sacramento and I actually might have put the wrong thing up on my video because when I went to relook at it, I go, oh my God, wait a minute. I looked at the other way around from Woodland going down into Davis and then at those locations. Whereas when we lived in the country, when those calls came in, there's actually a back road 
And I didn't even know about this back road because I'm a kid and I didn't go down that far. Holy crap. So you could actually go down the street where I used to live in the country when I was getting the calls. So he could have easily came in. He could have even came through the backside. It's so creepy. The whole, the whole, that area is just creepy because there's nobody there. Um, so they go down, down towards Davis and then it's kind of squared off and they keep going towards Sacramento and it's like in a staircase, right? To go back onto that Sacramento road to go right back home. And I go, oh, okay, that actually is probably what happened right there. And, and then in the case of the earlier portions where I'm too young to remember too much stuff, uh, the drive through where we used to live right there on Arnold, um, is right off the freeway. And I go, okay, that stuff right there, it just kind of, you know, started putting stuff together in that. Yeah, but I was born in Kaiser right there in Sacramento, which is about, what was it, like 10, 20, not, not even 20 minutes. I don't think it's 20 minutes. It was like 10 some odd minutes away from where he was living. I don't know if he was living there at the time. I would have to look into that. But he, there was something with somebody at a hospital. And then I also believe that my aunt worked as a nurse. Um, but I'm not sure where. I still can't find all that information great aunt should say it like that i go the worst you could say to me as a kid is like i wanted to marry everybody and i loved everybody and i was like oh my god that's that is crazy you need to not like everybody you need to dislike all these people you need to not want to be anywhere near these people because they're horrible monsters and they're all manipulators and they're going to harm you and you need to stay away from even these women out here that are piles of shit. <laughs> like, it's just like that thing. Like, if I were to tell my younger self, it's like some guy that's using humans as a weapon. Okay, wait a minute. Any person that uses a human as a weapon to try to piss somebody off is a clear sign that somebody's a sociopath. They typically will do that with kids and everything else, too. But I was like, that's a clear sign. I mean, an obvious clear sign where they take a person, they're like, I know this person's going to piss you off and go, boom. It's like, what the fuck? But some people don't do that purposely, okay? Sometimes it is like they don't know. They're not even privy to, like, what's going on over there. And then that's a different thing. But I'm just trying to clarify this action where it's like, I'm so mad at you. I'm going to go take this girl right here that I know that she's going to totally piss you off and go, Boom. yeah like totally that's the dude that you want to like fucking run from but it's not like anybody did anything right unlike in our case here where the perpetrators did harm kids and then they're just like you know what we should ignore it again the guy that posted on here is saying and what he's saying he's like what type of damn people are posting this stuff i go yeah <laughs> you should have seen it before me too because this was I was already talking about this before me too, but I did, I touched on an, a topic that wasn't really hit on, which was the coercion topic. So the coercion topic is rape and also kidnapping. So coercion can be used for a lot of things. You can coerce people into actions that they don't want to do. Uh, you see it in the prison system, right? Where they coerce somebody into a guilty plea. And they didn't do the crime at all. One guy had like a 60 IQ. I guess it was related to the uh, Chester Turner serial killer. And that guy I've not ruled out. I have not ruled out Chester. I don't believe. Uh, being the guy that I talked to. I was looking at him again last night. Because they, they linked another murder to him. And I go, you know what though? Uh, I don't know when he got the narc scar, but in 1992, the guy that we're talking about that was on the corner stated he came from the south side. He pointed down. He's like, I have a place out in the south side. And he points down away from Hollywood, down towards past sunset, right? He points that way. And I go, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. You know, I didn't even care. And so then, but he popped out of nowhere and he was a taller guy, right? And I'm a small person. And he's a bigger guy. And I go, yeah, he kind of remind me of like a Suge Knight type guy, right? Because he doesn't 
he doesn't like when you look at Shuggy, he doesn't like the, look like this straight up gangbanger, right? He kind of, I mean, you probably would know now because everybody knows him, but I'm just saying like he doesn't reek of like, you know, with all that crap going on and all that because that's how they were looking back in the day, a lot of them. And I was like, yeah, he looks like it's some dude that came out of, you know, he was on a holiday, you know, just like regular clothes, right? Regular clothes thing. And I go, yeah, why would this guy randomly come to this corner and perch around there and he's watching this drug action? And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know. Like, he could be a narc, but then again, he told off those those other gangbangers. And I'm like, there's something weird with this portion and it needs to be found out. You know, we need to figure out who these people are. So, um... When I read his story again last night, I go, yeah, I don't think I could rule him out. He was in jail at some point in 92. I go, the only way that I could rule him out is if he was in jail in the period of, well, I, I basically said June and July. Um, but any portion in that May, June, July, mm, yeah, right about there. Um, but I, I do think it was June, July. So um, that's where we're looking at. And also the mention of they somebody here in this group of people it was either him or another party in this thing right here said you need to be careful because there's there's a serial killer out here on the loose and I go that's really weird because as I'm looking at the story still today there's no serial killer that was in that area at that moment that you would have known or even connected to that area at that time period. There was a serial killer or somebody that had murdered a person or two. One of them was a photographer that lived down the way, which I did go past that place. Um, but nobody knew he was a, a killer yet. Okay, so nobody would have said anything. And the murder that he did was not in Hollywood. It was actually out in, the, in, in a different area. And then the other serial killers are from the south side. And they were mainly targeting women of color and sex workers. So I was neither one of those things, right? And also drug addicts. So I was neither one of those things. So I was like, okay, this... So I, I constantly... When they told me it, I kind of just brushed it off like, oh, they're only going after that. I think that was part of it. It was creepy, but then like, oh, it's not something that's going to hit me. I don't know why. It was this weird thinking about it when they said it at the time. So then as we're doing the hindsight on it, I go, that's really weird to even tell me that because there wasn't, to my knowledge, a bunch of people getting murdered in the area and people saying serial killer, serial killer, serial killer, which matters because the street talks, right? So the, the street would go, hey, you know, the, somebody died over here, you know, last night. You know, you would hear this stuff, right? They start talking, but no, only from this one person. And I go, that is bizarre and when i looked at him again i go he does fit the general description right of the person i'm talking about but a lot of people uh i wouldn't say like a huge amount of people could fit that description but he fits the general description of being tall large and he is a serial killer and he was drug dealing which this is the other thing that was interesting in the story i go i didn't see him doing drug deals doesn't mean he was not it's just that when I seen him, he was just hanging out. Now him hanging out, he could be meeting up with people and doing the same bullshit that the other people were doing. So I was like, well, that could be a thing. It would make sense. Let's just say it was Chester. Let's just hypothetically put him there. I go, it would make sense in this scenario that he's a drug dealer. He has an issue with the other drug dealers across the street because now they're like competing, right? And he started trashing the shit out of them. Do you think the serial killer would have a problem telling off some gangbangers? Absolutely not. So that dude, uh, and he's very streetwise, right? If you're a drug dealer, you're streetwise. So that dude right there could fit that person. So I was looking at it and I go, yeah. And the serial killer thing came up. And they uh, basically I tied him down to the south side for the most part. Um, down on Florence, what is it, Florence, uh, Figueroa, Figueroa, Figueroa and some other places. That area is, 
uh, what was it 20 minutes away it was it's a little bit of ways it's not extraordinarily close it's not really far either but i was like well uh is it possible like as i'm looking at the story because more the jet more of the deaths happen let me pull them up actually It's so weird because when I seen the guy, I go, I don't recall this narc scar, but um, he claimed he claim he claims that it happened during a robbery. Now, when did the robbery happen? Right? Uh, it could have happened after ninety two, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't see the pictures in in order of when he got this thing. So, like here, like I don't really see it. Is it possible I could have overlooked this? That's a hard thing to say. Um, when I see angles of him, I'm like, um, I don't know. And that's the thing. I have a hard time with facial recognition. So um, um, it's one of those that I was like, I couldn't rule him out. Let's just put it that way. So when I'm going down here, here's what happened. So we don't know anything about 89 anything. So in 1992, this is the area. They go, on November 16th of 92, the seventh known victim was found dead on the street of Vermont Vista. Okay, so where is this? I'm going to pull this up. Um, I was already long gone from the area um, in November. So the area that I'm looking at is july june and july of 92 so as you see no story starts from then it goes 89 then they found bodies uh figure out right then it stops do you see this and then it starts again in november so the months that i'm talking about are from july june july 92 further down the way and he said he was from the south side. And I thought, that's okay. He said he has a place over there. They said that he was homeless during a lot of these times. And then he was a drug dealer. And I was like, yeah, that could fit the guy. I mean, that totally could fit the guy. He just wandered out there then. And then I'm questioning, I'm like, well, what, it, okay, let's just say he wasn't in prison, he wasn't in jail, he wasn't in any of these things there. Um, did they overlook murders in Hollywood? Maybe he didn't do any murders in Hollywood. No. At some point they said that he was in and out of jail, but I don't know. That's the thing, I can't answer it. Like, in and out of jail, uh, somewhere in 92... I don't know if he got arrested, like what month, when he got out, what the deal is. It starts in November. So that's it. So I was like, shit, I don't know. So then if we look. So I was trying to pay attention to the locations of this because I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, the area where he jumped people, there's a lot of homeless people that sleep out here, too, by the way. Um, on the... Um, the, the mileage to this is, uh, well, that's what the drive is right now. It's literally 14 miles, okay? So I'm like, mm, um, is it possible? It's totally possible. However, when they stole my vehicle, that had more information on it. Because where they went, ugh, I can't tell you, but there was a location, the locations were on that, that computer printout on uh, LAPD's uh, computer. So it can't, it doesn't lead me in here. Um, but it doesn't mean that he didn't travel up here for a temporary time. So I was trying to look to see Moses thing. Moses thing is in that South side. And I was saying that Again, the guy said he was from the south side. So, um, I only seen him there for the couple weeks. And that was it. He actually fell asleep in my car, you guys. And it, I was reading this. I was like, you know how creepy that is? Just the, if it was, I was like thinking of the, if it was, because like he had, he had, he had opportunity, but the person didn't do that. So it said Turner in 2002, he was working as a security guard in downtown's homeless shelter. So the same month he assaulted 
47 year old and then yeah he has to borrow a cigarette lighter and then harmed her right i've had people do this like in the people i was running from right they'll be like all nice and then all of a sudden this monster comes out so this is the ted bundy and i was saying that a lot of people are like this and then lapd will put dispute lapd would absolutely put dispute and it's like what the hell you didn't do anything what are you disputing nothing they're psychotic and then they made threats of, to kill her if she called the police so i had people do that too where they're making threats and making you know follow me around it's like are you gonna call the cop yeah i was just like cops aren't gonna do anything for me they're gonna say that you're innocent and um and the victim and i'm the perpetrator totally this would turn into lapd coming and they're like this would be me can i get a cigarette lighter this is exactly what happened at the um oz fest the guy with the cigarette thing is like can we get a cigarette and the next thing you know we end up getting kidnapped i'm like i don't see where that is the okay in the story all right so they put him in the dna thing more bodies come back is his kind of related to his yeah okay so in this case this is where i was talking about they got this guy to like kind of admit to that he did these murders and they said he had an iq of 60. i'm like that's hella messed up dude that thing rather than using convictions as a basis for excluding turner the detectives reevaluated the physical evidence the detectives found that Jones 1995 trial had relied upon other evidence, including Jones coerced statements to police instead of DNA analysis at the detectives request, the LAPD crime laboratory processed the available evidence using the latest DNA applications. Although DNA analysis could not be used to reinvestigate the Christmas murder, prosecutors and police are confident that Jones is innocent of the Christmas murder and that Turner is likely. Jones had been convicted of a rape and related to the murders during the, his trial, he had served out a sentence for the 2000 rape conviction. The new investigation revealed that the blood type evidence did not match the blood types found in the crime scene. He spent 11 years in prison. He was acquitted as a murderer. And then Jones was released from prison in March 2004 and filed a lawsuit. And then he was awarded 720K compensation. He gets more than I do for them destroying my life for 30 years. And I didn't even commit a crime. I didn't rape nobody. I am not nothing. And this is where victims should be really pissed off on things like this. Because I don't know if he actually raped anybody, but the, I think he did one crime, but then didn't do that. I don't know. Um, that's the problem with the story because... A lot of these people were staying in hotels at the time and he came from somewhere and he actually may have came from a hotel and that's why I was like I have no idea you know I mean these people will say like oh, I got a house and you know in the hillside and I'm rich and it's being renovated and so I'm out here right now you know some bullshit you know so he didn't he said something about his house but something weird about his house but he was from the south side that's that much i know and then it was just kind of like whatever whatever his bullshit story was and you always take it in with a grain of salt like eh, i mean it could be true it may not be true and he probably is homeless and lives in a hotel like he's just kind of going this thing and um but he was cleaned up it wasn't like he looked like one of some of these other guys that looked like they hadn't changed their clothes in about 20 years so no he was cleaned up so that would indicate that he probably was in a hotel and why they were there that's the question yeah by october 2004 10 more unsolved murders were matched to him yeah i mean it's very possible it's just the possibility and i go yeah i can't rule them out man but the other thing about it is if government doesn't know that he was in hollywood they could overlook unsolved cases in hollywood that's one part um and i was really lucky it wasn't bad that way but 
I don't really fit the description of his victims necessarily because when you look at um, what he's looking for. Yeah, so he's looking for black women, you guys. I mean, this is what he was looking for. He's looking for black women, sex worker, drug addict. I fit none of those things. And so I was even looking at this. I go, is that even another possibility? Yeah, because I don't fit the, the description. And the way he was talking about even the guy, the drug dealer, he was calling him like a, like a man whore type of thing. Yeah, he was like, oh, that you be doing stuff for this, for money. And he's such a this and that. Oh, it was awful. He was like trashing him to hell. And I was like, all freaked out. Like the whole story just freaked me out. Like everything that was going on here freaked me out. And, but he was verbally trashing him in that way. And I go, God, there's so much weird in this story that I don't, uh, I would like to know who that person is. Cause it doesn't seem like a random, like it's just some random homeless guy. Cause like what, why does he know all that information? And why is he like going up to the street guys and being like, yo, you know, this, and he knows how to talk to him, but yet he doesn't seem to be with them. That was another thing to it. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's like, I was like, it could be a narc. It could be, it could be. And maybe that's why you got a narc scar, you guys. <laughs> I was like, that's why you got a narc scar. I call these narc scars. Uh, I, the girl in one of my cases has that too. And she claimed, I don't know. She went through a window or so. I don't know. They claim some bullshit. And his bullshit is he got robbed. But sometimes i don't know it's almost like people never heard of this before the term narcs <laughs> i don't know if it's a real thing or not but obviously this guy's bad so like when they when they snitch on somebody or they think he's gonna snitch or he did something wrong with this other bro ham or somebody um and they'll they'll like cut him <laughs> they'll cut him so everybody knows like don't trust this guy <laughs> It's usually from, like, mouth to ear. This one all the way to the back of his head. <laughs> I don't know. He claims that... Like, that's pretty obvious. I would, I would think that that would be something that would be very obvious to me. But maybe I didn't know what a narc scar was then. And maybe I just... <laughs> I don't know. But I would think that I remember that. Because that, that's actually quite a detail, like, on someone's face. But again, I don't know when he got it. When I was trying to look, I go, when did he get the, when, when did he get the scar? Like here, you can't really see it as well, but don't trust that guy. He's going to totally rat you out. <laughs> yeah, Lonnie, Lonnie, that's that other guy. Okay, yeah, I looked at Lonnie and I looked at Michael Hughes and I believe I ruled them out. Lonnie looks nothing like him and neither does this guy. Chester, though, however, can fit him except I don't remember an arc scar. That's just the problem, and I'm pulling it up, and I'm like, well, when was this? Okay, when was this? You know, he has it. It looks like he has it here, so. But I don't know what year that is. Turner was jailed multiple times in the 1980s and 1990s for theft and drug possession. First from 1987 to 1989. Then 1989 to 1992. But he was obviously out in by that November to kill somebody else. That's so I'm like, I don't know what they mean by that. Do they mean he was incarcerated from 89 to 92 and they let him out in 92? But when did they let him out in 92? Because if he was let out in, say, July or June, um, and then he went straight to the Hollywood area first, and then he could have actually went back down to where he was going. I mean... I have no idea. That's why I'm like, it's not defined there. So, and then from 93 to 95, and in 95, he was arrested and later convicted for car theft. So, the other people did the car theft on me, but um, he, the guy that I'm talking about, didn't have a car. Let's just put it this way. He didn't have a car, and he sat in the passenger side and then took a nap. He went to bed. <laughs> I'm like, he went to sleep in my car. And then I was just like, eh. Indicates that he did not have a place. If he did, I don't know. Maybe he took it as like, oh, I don't have to pay for rooms. And I don't know what the hell is going on here.
Okay, they've been arrested for... But he was he was a clean guy. He... You could literally trust him with your bag next to him. That's what was so crazy about this, that I wasn't even bothered that this guy's gonna thieve off me. And if it turned out to be him, it's just like, I don't know. For whatever reason, he decided that I'm not his target. That's what I was looking at. I was like, well, could that be the case? Yeah, because I don't fit any one of his victims. None of them. So... That's one of the possibilities. I have a hard time thinking that Shug was out there doing that. Um, because he was busy with recordings and beating up other gangbangers. Um, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, but uh the the yeah uh, yeah, he could totally fit it. He could fit it. Okay, when her identification of Turner was questioned, she said she knew him because of a long scar on his face. Turner has an eight inch scar from the top of his head to the right cheek, which he told police he received when he was attacked and robbed. Actually, what actually could have happened, uh, it not being like a real narc scar, what I'm talking about, um, that, oh, let me pull this up elsewhere, uh, that, uh, one of his victims, one of his victims when they were fighting him off, 